inshallah and ashe. What's on the heart's menu? The magic of unconditionally loving our heart self. Trusting and loving the process along with creating the field of protection, knowing as or also known as boundaries, energetic, protecting the process of how far we've actually come in our internal love story. Why? <laughs> because we've done all this work. We're in the progress or the process and we've accomplished literally so much to elevate our relationship with our inner heart self, also known as the God spot, the core of our chalice. It's forming in our day to day at life. It's taking form from energy to matter. It's time to hold the note, the tone, the sacred tone of inner peace and allow our manifestations, this process to do its magical thing, the beauty that resides within each and every one of us. So anything that we've changed in our internal world, the realm of self-love, our inner love, literally it needs to uh, remain intact, glued together, maybe nailed together, taking form. So this energy may feel a little topsy-turvy like the turbats. It's only because it feels unfamiliar and we get twisted on the inside when things are unfamiliar. So really get familiar with the unfamiliar today um, and take yourself out on a date confirming this new authentic you, the new self-loving you. Hopefully you've married yourself. I actually did that years ago. I took myself to the altar. I bought myself an engagement ring, did the whole thing and took myself out to um, an engagement party, I guess. Just offering my own internal love of support within myself, creating comfort and support inside as much as we can. But the key to access this container is really allowing ourselves to be open to this manifestation opening up to the manifestation and to receive what we have manifested for ourselves, knowing that we are worth it. And a lot of it is actually self value on the inside. So with that, welcome to the daily snippet. I am your host. I'm a practicing holistic shaman and medium and otherworldly life coach and a subtle energetic surgeon. But I do go by the term holistic shaman medium, which is a merging of it all coined by my friend Rich in Mongolia, which was an adventure of a lifetime heading back there soon. But my intention is to utilize these indigenous technologies along with the elemental realms, our original divine blueprint to navigate our soul's harmonic through these realms, elemental, imaginal, and into and through the shamanic portal, which is the eighth energetic center, our souls. I think they call it the soul star sometimes. Either way, that is what it is. But the cosmos, the subtle realms, and really so much more with offerings, prescriptions, and rituals, the otherworldly kind to really add to the juice, our, uh, the sauce of our main stage ingredients, the key to access our personal container, our personal medicine, and also our prime directive in this timeline, just really assisting you in discovering your own inner genius, your personal medicine, the star that I believe we all uniquely are, by reintroducing you to that magical essence, the being that resides within you so your light shines even brighter. My name is Tanya D and welcome to my virtual medicine room. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do YouTube or otherwise, referring a friend and liking and sharing. It really does assist in echoing out into the corridor. You can find me on YouTube at Tanya D and of course my podcast, Musing with Tanya D. I'm thinking I'm going to invite some guests on. I had that download this morning, but have you listened into the Otherworldly Insights? Uh, that's this season's title of the year. I always go with a seasonal year title or a theme. Also on Instagram and some private groups where I am also streaming now as well. And let's give a big shout out to the community, the village, to my new subscribers. As always, Ashe and blessings. Thank you for that. A heartfelt gratitude. And a bigger shout out to those of you that have been a part of my otherworldly journey since the beginning. I see you. I hear you. Gratitude to you as well. We know we're not alone in the village, right? And also, if you don't mind hitting the bell button so you are notified and remember a comment and a share or, or one or the other it does get you a message for your day to get you on your way. It really does help with that algorithm to echo it out to other like-minded musers that uh, are in the galactic universe. Uh, wondering where we all belong lately, right? Um, with all the world of spirit, the subtle energies, also known as the chakras, the pathways, the source, the cosmos, and so much more, I might add. And you can also find me on TikTok, which has been really fun if you're a TikToker. However, if your soul is nudging, possibly pulling you, dragging and screaming, to dive on deeper into the realms of the other world, head on over to my Musing Corridor. This is a digital library in the sky, which is actually having an energetic hiccup right now. 
but it really is a venue where you have some amazing options to assist you, to guide you, along with the private sacred circle, a community, a village to utilize as well. I really am your otherworldly shamanic assistant. You truly are your own healer. And we're going through that grid line, I can tell you that. But sometimes we do need another worldly life coach and assistance to uh, just get us on our way and out of our own way. So with that, just a few announcements. The meditation circle was yesterday. You can actually tune in on YouTube and premiere and watch that. And the early bird opportunity to invest in yourself. That door is open to utilize your intuitive gifts and your psychic abilities the world of energy, merging the intuitive energy, the spirit realm into the physical, into the body, being embodied, uh, energy to matter, bringing spirit to matter, to change your star or reignite the store or activate that star. That's on the energetic highway, the star that you uniquely are. And when we begin to merge the energy body, the subtle energetic body with our physical and our soul, we then become the being, the star that we are actually meant to be lighting up our starlight who we are. And in the season of Libra, in our container, in relating or of relating, the main stage ingredient really is relationships and partnerships in our inner corridor, internally and then out, outer, outernally is almost what I said. But right now, these inner relations are really taking form. Uh, the me self and the chalice coming to the earth star, spirit again to matter. And if again, you did miss the meditation portal that is on premiere on YouTube, but I am loving this loving self-love creator energy, the energy taking form, making something become real, something that has was once an idea maybe in the ethers, the etheric, into something that is self-sustaining, being full embodied embodiment. It's manifesting our relationship to our me self, in your case, your you self, but all this energy, all the energy and the work that we've been doing since the beginning of the season of Libra, it's all really uh, coming together to take form, to take shape. So it's like, what are you making and creating beauty? Beauty transforms, that self-image transforms the mirror, minds within myself, right? And with what my heart values. If I'm not feeling valued, that energy exchange, what I deliver to you, will literally be of that value, Um Picking up what I'm throwing down. Hope that makes sense. But there may be moments where we feel tested on our elements of interchange, the ingredients in our personal cosmic soup pot. But the key to mastering this energy is that loving sensation. Love is the master key. Um, and protecting what the core of our heart loves. Uh, loving the changes of what we are creating. I am certainly loving mine, even though I do have a little glitch here, an energetic hiccup with Mercury just coming out of the closet, if you... <laughs> or know what I'm talking about, but it's the relationship that's an internal love garden. So you may feel as if there is more to do. However, it's simply holding space and trusting the process, taking that breath, taking that pause, hug and embrace yourself, especially during the process. It really is like hugging a tree or hugging your outer self, your authentic self, nurturing that aspect of who you are. But again, welcome to Amusing Monday and on the chalice here for your options. I went with dogs, cats, and fish. <laughs> Don't ask why. That's just what toned in this morning. But note, uh, note that you have uh, done the internal work. You've really married yourself, your heart. You're having a heart-to-heart -heart, uh, communion, if you will. Maybe you took the vow like I did. You may begin to feel challenges occurring in your relationships to other, to people, situations, events, and things. They may appear real, but today's not the day to really participate in. We are just holding space, holding that inner note for our inner heart, that love story that we're rewriting. So just really take notice, take note of where you see room for uh, growth in your relationships and partnerships to expand in your outer realms, the outer world, the world outside of yourself. We're going to start to address these symptoms soon and create a solution. So just take space, loving space with trusting and loving your manifestation station, whatever it is you're creating with creator and all the work that you've been doing on the internal realm. Because all these changes are coming into form, they're manifesting again energy to matter. If uh, you're picking that up. Things are kind of quiet in my space right now, so that's interesting. But again, you've got dogs, cats, or fish. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going with, but I like that idea. But on the elemental highway, look at all that earth. Woo! Uh, 
We're not getting a new month branch yet, I believe right before the full moon, the full blood harvest moon, which uh, that musing moon will be on the highway this week. Uh, be sure to check your inbox for that. But it's a yin earth ox of a day. So ox are slow. They're gradual. They're steady movers. Um, they plow through the day. They do get things done, but they do it all on their own progress, their own process, <laughs> steady, moving forward, plowing the fields. But yin earth, we do need the sun to add some warmth, yin water as well, like a river, a nice mist of rain to add moisture to all that earth. We've got a lot of earth there, which is supportive for our day. Our, our day is actually weak, but it is supported. It's got other elementals around it. But remember, yin earth is fertile soil. I always feel uh, compassion for people born with a yin earth day master because the fertile soil is a lot, um, it's, it's holding space. It has all the living creations are sprouting from it. They're plentiful. They're very different. So what does that even mean? So if this was a person born under this element, knowing you're resourceful, you're creative, why? Because you have the main element right next to you. You've got a yin earth next to you and you have another one right below you with the ox. So natural born nurturers, life coaches, highly adaptive, which allows them to uh, nurture the most or utilize the most of what they have, no matter what life is throwing at them. So that's curious. They love to see things grow. That's what gives them the highest pleasure. So today's energy is one of a natural born teacher, a coach, like soil that supports the growth of grass and trees. Unless, of course, the establishment is tearing down the earth to build more of the concrete jungle. Adversity happens in those conditions. And the adversity does energetic damage, sometimes unseen, but you can feel it. But yin earth provides resources for other people to grow around them. So that's why sports and coaches, sport coaches usually, they usually have this element. Um, but they're often sick also. They're sick, usually having allergies. A lot, really, a lot of them. Why? Again, because the soil has so many different life forms that live within it. It's its own dimensional realm. But um, they're useful. They're useful as nutrition for plants. But the best way to treat yin earth people or a day full of all this yin energy is with herbs. Uh, the body reacts the best with organic live substances. It reminds me of like sprouting foods, <laughs> sprouts, uh, specific to the quantity and the size of it. But our day is weak, but we do have an abundance of it, which is a big field. So they can grow a lot of wood or grass sprouts, which means if this was a person, again, they have a lot of uh, careers, different careers and a rich relationship with life. But the sun, we really do need the element of big fire. And we also need some nature, some plants to grow. But on the month, we also have a friend, God, a friend indeed, you know, um, these are like, uh, creating meaningful relationships and bonding, spending time in our social circles. And on the year, we have what's called the communicator. So this is storytelling, communication, persuasion, perfect for sales, acting, writing, and any other creative artistic um, skills or abilities. So this is like a friend who communicates through uh, storytelling or artistry. That's kind of um, the frequency of today. But herbs, I think we need to take some herbs <laughs> or be aware of herbs. Earth, I'm telling you, Earth, I'm not even going to go into that rabbit hole. However, back to our options. Dogs, cats, or fish. Look at that. I couldn't, I like the fish I chose. I'm just saying that out loud. I could have put my dogs and cats on there. That's awesome. Okay, our messages, um, being that uh, things are taking form today, energy to matter, spirit to soul. So things are flowing. So if you chose the dogs, I usually don't go in a circle, but I guess I do. If you chose the dogs, you get the king of wands. So look at all that fire, torches, fire, action. I almost said sorcery, actually. But you can see that this is a strong-willed man. He's sitting on the edge of his throne. He's scanning the horizon. It kind of feels like Zeus. <laughs> I'm just saying. But he's ready. He's yearning for action and sitting still. Woo! Tending to the mundane. That's very boring. Uh, this is Mars energy. It's the sun. It's Jupiter. It's fire, right? Which we do have Jupiter and Chiron in the season of Aries and Mars is in the season of Gemini. But this is being determined. It's focused. It's drive. You're being driven. Something has your full attention. You're channeling all this energy and the skill in that direction. Having a strong sense that you are right in all the things concerning this venture, whatever you're capitalism is, I guess. So your ambition and the social needs are really engaging. 
Uh, for now, that really is all that matters. But just be aware that you that what you believe, uh, believing that you are right, that your way is the only way, could create um, disturbance. Actually, there may need to uh, temperament, creating a temperament or a character of being overly bossy or maybe you're being intolerant of others. But I'm not really feeling that. This is putting things into action and trusting and loving the process because there's fire stirring the pot or warming the cosmic soup. Initiation of that action. It's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, the cosmic soup is getting warmed up. <laughs> we need that. So following the king of wands, a few chose the fish. Look at that. You get the ace of cups, which I'm loving this image. I don't know. Um, so it's like the watery world of emotions. And look at that seeing eye and the chalice, the cup. The cycles of the moon, the fish, the golden fish, the horizon. Beautiful. I'm loving this. There's also two dogs, two protectors. I kind of saw them as wolves for some reason. But the moon is still in Capricorn. The sun in Libra. The one. But the moon. Loving the emotional tidal waves. It's like, can you commit to a feeling? A heartfelt feeling. A feeling amazing. A new heart internal feeling sensation. Taking that vow to really love yourself internally so that your garden flows to your day-to-day -day life. That's the feeling that's being initiated. But the Ace of Cups, uh, the number one, this is um, literally heartfelt loving inside of ourselves. It's idealism, romance. It's the Holy Grail, the holiest of communion. Uh, God, universe, the gift of the universe. It's providing depth and feeling to our lives. It's the Holy Spirit, the guardian of our galaxy, that seeing eye. But here, the gift is purity of emotion. It's spiritual love. It's meant to guide us. So if we set our eye on spirituality, spirit, we can move more easily and we can easily see our way through uh, the tidal waves of life, those experiences, and the wide range of our human emotions, the field of emotions. So just as the moon, which who doesn't love the moon, right? It does appear to remain the same. But it does appear differently depending on the focus of the sun. So being that we're in the season of Libra, the moon's frequency is different, right? So our experience of these emotions varies or differs according to how we choose to see them. So it's just like the energy of the magician, who is also a one, which is heartfelt. In the major arcana, the gift of the grill is meant to really guide us. Uh, but it can be manipulative on the other side of the magician and lead us down some uh, spiraling rocky roads. So you're being kind of drawn along by a feeling. Your emotions are engaging. You feel more alive possibly than normal or usual. And it may be the beginning of a new romance, a spiritual epiphany or a desire to really express your uh, self artistically. I'm kind of seeing paintings for some reason. But whatever it is, you are at the start of this exciting new adventure. Just be aware of running from this experience. Don't fear or discount or even avoid the intensity of our feelings. We need to validate those. Even though most of the time they do feel uncomfortable at first, but just learning to identify and expressing our emotions. Um, this is kind of a continuance of creating a solid emotional foundation, emotions and feeling amazing inside of ourselves. Very healing energy, actually, emotions if you choose to uh, play with them. And to finish up, if you chose those cute little kittens, you get the moon, <laughs> which is great. This You can't make this stuff up, but this feels like an emotional tidal wave of a day. The moon, the goddess of the night. Oh, how who doesn't love the moon? Let's just be real. Uh, but the 18, this is committing to our heart. The moon commits to the heart, our emotions, our field of permeating this energy, acting on or initiating an internal loving sensation, committing to a feeling that you can act upon or initiate that you can hold. And this is a majestic orb. It's inspiring us like no other, seriously. The moon through the seasons, she's speaking to our soul. She releases those animal instincts like wolves howling in the night. I'm thinking of like the werewolf, you know, how the people turn into werewolves, I guess. I don't know. Um, just inviting, you can see the crab coming to the opposing surface. But this kind of is an alien creature. It represents our deepest fears. And the light of the moon allows us to feel it or feel into it, but it provides enough even shadow that we can't ignore it if we're uh, we're careful, right? Ignoring the moon, the goddess of the night. So it heightens our emotions and also our intuition, um, our psychic abilities. So she's 
She does show us our worst nightmares, which I call the ghost in the darkness. And again, she gives us our vast dreams as well. So two opposing forces. But the message of the goddess of the night, the moon, is that all shadowy as moonlight, is it's lit in the darkest of the dark. So just paying attention to our dreams, our intuition, facing our fears. And even if you do so a little at the time, those baby steps, we tend to attend to our soul. Tend to our soul. Hopefully that came out right. But just be aware of not seeing clearly, of being afraid of shadows that's otherworldly, or being led astray by those shadowy images. Uh, they aren't what they may seem, but really just loving the moon. I just, um, that is a globe there, right? So maybe we create a globe of the moon, the moon on her axis as we do for the world spinning around. So with the cosmic energy and an additional value and ingredient of consciousness, really taking time and space to really value ourselves within our sacred space, this progress um, that we've made within ourselves, sometimes we need to take time and space to nurture that space, which is the moon, and add up all of the ingredients, our achievements, our self certificates, and take notice of our inner will of progress and assume that things are building upon the sacred trusting foundation building into greater things, baby steps. So gather all of your heart's estimates, giving yourself the benefit of the doubt. So we're manifesting a new you or a new me. And this plays out in the cosmic webbing. It's de different for each and every one of us. There's a variety of things. But I'd bring in the element of fire to stoke your inner fires, warm up your own cosmic soup, like the fire under your cheeks, um, your butt cheeks. Uh, we also had the king of wands. So that is also big fire. So this feels like a cosmic internal flame inside of us, but with the earth star online, so bringing the sound of the throat center, self-expression, our hearing sister and our verbal intuition channel to the earth star to manifest into our reality through our love spot or our God spot, whatever you want to call it, the sacred chalice within each and every one of us. But I would affirm that I am in my inner peace or at my inner peace, a soul's harmonic, a soul's harmony and believing in yourself. Um, heartfelt wishes, dreams come true when we heartfelt believe, have integrity, hold space to manifest, allowing things to take form from the inside to the outside and taking action and going through the initiation process. So with all of that, inshallah, ashe, thanks for tuning in and just know I'm having a little energetic hiccup on uh, my platform, my website. Uh, so with that, I will see you on the other side, or at least tomorrow. Ashe, blessings. Change your stars. <laughs>